So we have gone ahead and have drawn a generic looking vector function r of t that would be the black curve we've selected an arbitrary point on that curve we've called that point p and then we have drawn a tangent vector at that point the tangent vector is symbolized by r prime of t but in this question we don't want just the tangent vector we want very specifically the unit tangent vector. Now a unit tangent vector will be another vector with a length of one that is pointing in the same direction as this red tangent vector. So that blue one would be our unit tangent vector and it's going to be pointing again in the same direction as this red tangent vector. The only difference is that the unit tangent vector has a length of one. And so how do we find it? Well, here is a presentation from your textbook. We can read the definition again. A unit vector has the same direction as the tangent vector. And here is how we find it. Now you might remember how to find any unit vector. You take that vector and then divide by the magnitude of the vector. So that is exactly what we're going to do here, but we're going to need to figure out the tangent vector first. We need, in other words, r prime of t. So let's take a look at our original equation and see if we can find r prime of t. Fortunately, when you find r prime of t, all you really need to do is find the, com the derivative, excuse me, the derivative of the x, y, and z components and then we'll be plugging in the given t value right here. So we'll start with the x component. We need the derivative of t squared minus 2t. We all know that that is equal to 2t minus 2. And then we move over to the y component. The derivative of 1 plus 3t is just 3. And then we're going to move over to the z component right here, and we'll do the derivative. So we multiply 3 by 1 third to get 1t to the power of 2, and then multiply 2 by 1 half to get t to the power of 1. So that is our tangent vector, and we need to evaluate the tangent vector at a specific t value of 2. So now we just plug in 2 for t, and then when we simplify, we will see that the x component, we have 2 times 2 is 4, minus 2 is 2, the y component is locked in at 3, and then the z component is going to be 2 squared, so 4 plus 2 is 6. So that is our tangent vector. Now we're going to find the unit tangent vector. And recall to find the unit tangent vector, we will just find the magnitude and put that into the denominator here. So here's what it would look like. We're gonna do the T, capital T, of two. Remember our little t value was two. We already have R prime of T, so we can just plug that into the numerator. And then in the denominator, we're going to plug in, as noted, the magnitude of r prime of t. Now recall that the magnitude is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. It's basically a three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem. So you take the square root of your x component squared plus your y component squared plus your z component squared. We'll simplify the denominator because we have the square root, let's see, of 4 plus 9 plus 36, and so that's going to be 49. Square root of 49, of course, is 7. So now all we need to do is divide each component by 7. So our final answer for the unit tangent vector is 2 sevenths comma 3 sevenths comma 6 sevenths. This is the correct answer to the question. Those are the x, y, and z components of the unit tangent vector. And recall that that would have a length of one and it would be pointing in the same direction as the tangent vector was pointing. You can confirm that the length is one by finding the magnitude if you wish. You would just take the square root of the sum of the squares of each components. And if you did that, just as a check, you would see that that would in e indeed equal one. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.